I'm not sure if you've noticed this yet. One of the things I do in these videos is I take ideas I had as a kid and turn them into reality, because that's a lot of fun. Now I was getting interested in vehicles back when ATVs were going from three wheels to four, and then they were just the coolest thing ever to drive off-road. The big knobby tires that are nice and squishy were just great. I always wanted to try putting a set on a Jeep, but the diameters were too small and the rims were too small. But now that side-by-sides have become popular, the tires are growing, the rims are growing, and they've been around long enough they're getting cheap. So I scored a set of four ATV tires that I think will fit on a Jeep for only 75 bucks for the full set. Well, I already know they fit on a Jeep. Now let's put them on a running one and see if it's a good idea. Now what caught my eye on the listing was the size, which is a 3010R15. So 30 inch diameter, 10 inch wide, 15 inch rim, that's perfect Jeep size. And they still even have some good tread left on them. Well, they have some tread left on them, most of them. I just have to do a little bit of cleaning of the cobwebs and the dirt inside and they'll be good to go. Now I gotta dig around for some 15 inch rims to put these on. I know I got some of those lying around here somewhere. Now sometimes finding a set of rims is like an Easter egg hunt. I know they're around here somewhere. Like right there. Underneath this center section of a half track axle. That one's a 15. Farm use only. Not just not for highway use, unsafe for highway use. Found another one. That one's a 15. These are the right bolt pattern and the right size, but they're also made out of uh, thick plate steel. That might be a little on the heavy side for a Jeep. Nope, those are 16s. That one's a 15. That's one of those double wide rims. So I don't think that's gonna be right. Ooh, dump out the water though. This one actually I found first, but then I took a wire brush to it and uh, yeah, there's uh, some minor rust issues. I could probably use it if I welded those up, but I'm gonna see if we can find ones that already will hold air. This one's a 15, but it's a Ford with a small center diameter, and it's a real narrow rim. It's kind of a cool tread pattern tire on it. So this one is a 15 outer, welded to a 16 inner. Someone homemade that one. Uh, that's a possibility. This one is an implement tire, right bolt pattern, but you have the holes here for mounting uh, wheel weights to it. This might work, it's offset out a little farther, but um, I might give it a shot if I don't find anything better. Found another one of those implement wheels, so now I got a matching set, same bolt holes, but uh, these are getting more likely now, because I have at least two of them. And then I got a pile of 16s, those are all wrong. I ended up needing to use the phone a friend option, and uh, ended up trading a set of old tires with only a few miles on them. For a set of four of three different style rims, two Ford, two Jeep, and the Fords don't match each other, but uh, I got all four. So I'm good to go to put those tires on. Now I gotta throw a set of rollers on this one. Well, that's okay, I need more traction on this Jeep anyway. Mainly I care about rust on the bead seating surface and where the valve stem goes. That's all that really matters. Now normally I'm not a fan of black rims because it kind of blends together with the tire. But in this case, with all the mismatched rims, I think blending in with the tire is a good thing. Now whenever I'm working with these rims that are riveted together, I always put an extra coat of paint on the rivets to hopefully eliminate any leaks. Oh yeah, nice and thick there. Good enough. Now this tire has two plugs there. Those are the good kind. And, and there's one of those rope style plugs, which work pretty decently. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave that as is. 
Uh, this would be a good time to replace with a good one, but it seems easier just to leave it there. Now this tire has a plug there, the good style. And this is a good style one too, but it looks like it's come off. Actually, no. What did they do? Yeah, I don't know. Let's look from the outside. That's a rope style one too. Looks like they had a good style patch on it. That started leaking and they shoved it through while installing this one. So uh, let's assume that'll be fine too. Still can't believe I could put a ATV tire on a 15 inch rim. We'll see if that's really true. That was way easier than any car tire I put on. Maybe these really are extra flexible. All right, let's hit the next speed. Now I'm going with a 10 inch wide tire on a five and a half inch wide rim. So now this clamp will actually push that bead down into the groove while you're mounting it by hand. For those of us that don't have the nice machine. There we are. Okay, I officially have an ATV tire on a car rim. Now I'm gonna pull that valve core and that'll speed it up a little bit. There we go. Does not want to seep. Doesn't want to pop on. I don't want to go too much pressure. So we're going to try another trick. Let's pop this off again, all the way around. And we're going to use the bead sealer as a lubricant. So I'm just going to put a layer of that all the way around. It'll lubricate it and seal it once it gets done. I think ATVs have a different shape bead mounting surface on the rim. So just because the rim's the same diameter, it still may not work, but that's why I'm doing this, is so that you don't have to. And you'll know pretty soon, one way or the other, whether this does work or not. And so will I. So it's science. Eh, I think I got it all the way around. Let's find out. There we go. We now have an ATV tire on a Jeep rim. Ooh, that's bouncy. This is gonna flex. Now the question is, did I make the right move by leaving those plugs in? Let's find out. Don't see any air bubbles there. Oh, I don't see any air bubbles at the plug, but I see some over here. Yep, somewhere there wasn't a plug or an indication of a hole. But both those plugs are holding up fine. Ooh, that's got air leaking here, and air leaking there. This tire might have some issues. I actually finally did a little bit of research on these tires. So they are Canatai mongrel tire and it says they're not for highway use. These tires are still made and still available and the new ones are DOT approved. So if I like this setup I can replace them with ones that are actually legal for road use. Now uh, the other thing is they're expensive. They're over $200 a tire new. However the Polaris Razor uh, uses these a lot apparently and uh, I already found two more used sets locally. Uh, better shape than this one in the several hundred dollar range. So I might just replace these with better ones if I like them. 
For now, I'm gonna pop a couple more plugs in these tires, at least get them to hold air long enough to try for a while and see if it's worth putting on uh, better ones. Another plug. Oop. Almost pushed that one in too far. Got it just in time. Is that another hole? Oh, hey, there's a lot over here. This tire has a lot of holes in it. I'm almost curious to what they did with these tires, because we have hole, 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 Um, there's a lot of them. Well, I've got quite a few tire plugs installed. In fact, I've installed every one I have in the shop except for one. I'm going to fill them up and save that one in case I need one more to stop any big leak. When I bought these tires, the seller told me that there were two that were completely shot. I think it's these two. There's still a couple small leaks. Some tire slime might fix those. So I'm going to let these dry before I give them a haircut here. But in the meantime, while these dry, I've got a test in mind I could do with two tires. Now I'm going to pull off the passenger side tires of this Jeep and put the ATV tires on it. Leave the stock ones on the other side so we can see the difference. Well, I got this off. Let's compare. These are my takeoff P-metric tires that I got for not getting a disposal fee. Uh, there are 265, 70, 16, right off my Suburban, and uh, on stock Jeep rims. Now let's compare them to the ATV tires. The height is just about the same. The width is pretty close. Uh, the ATV tire is more rounded, and uh, that's about it. Other than that, this should be a fairly even comparison because they're not significantly different. Huh. That looks just about right for a Jeep. Let's put the weight of the Jeep on them and see how they squish. Now I'm running wheel spacers on this Jeep because the uh, tires, when I turned, hit the leaf springs. And uh, this little bit, I think it's into the quarter, so that was fine to clear it. And uh, it, gives, it makes the Jeep a little wider too, which helps for stability. Though the one thing about running wheel spacers, when you have the tire off, it's a good time to check the inner lug nuts, because that's the only real problem you run into. If those inner ones come loose, you don't see them, then the whole thing can come off. Now this front tire didn't squish much either, so I've got too much pressure on these. Oh, that's 15 PSI. Let's go to 10. Well, I got a square edged obstacle here, and I got 10 PSI on all the tires. Let's compare them. Now I watched that video and those ATV tires feel squishier. Those passenger car tires looked way squishier on camera. So I thought maybe it was my camera angle was bad, so I redid it with a different angle.
and still those passenger tires looked like they flexed a lot more. Then I had a thought. I don't know if this is true, but I've got a guess here. On these passenger car tires, the tread is real flat. So when you hit something, this tread pushes in and all the flex is in the sidewall. So you have to have the real flexible thin sidewalls and a fairly rigid tread. On these tires, the front edge is much more curved. So when you hit something, you don't squish the sidewalls, you just flatten the tread out. So the center pushes in and the whole thing gets wider and flatter before you even get close to deflecting the sidewalls. Now that seems ideal for uh, going over obstacles, but I bet it has a lot of rolling resistance because you're really flexing that tread all the time, and I bet it builds up more heat. So that might be why they don't use these on the street. Good thing I saved that one last plug. I found a big hole in this one. And that's it. I'm officially out of plugs in the shop. I went through them all. Everything there and there and there is totally fine. We'll just run this. Now I'll just do a little off the top here, just to trim. Good enough. We'll ignore those. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that two of these rims are Ford rims. And the problem with that is this center hole. That center hole is much smaller than the Jeep rim center hole. And the problem there is the front hubs of the Jeep will not fit through this center hole. Now in my Jeep tire testing video, I converted some Ford rims to Jeep style by cutting the centers out. Ah, there we go. I don't need to right now because I only have two Ford ones. And even with the small centers, they fit on the back. All right. On my last tire change here, and I realized I should probably pause and get a weight of the tires. Got a handy little uh, suitcase scale, which I think will work fine. 53.2 pounds for a tire and wheel. Now the ATV tire, This one's 48 pounds even, so it's actually lighter. That's nice. Well, I got all four tires on here, and for now, they've got air in them. So uh, it's time to find out if we like them and do some testing. of science, I found a nice private road to try them out on pavement. I got a lot more bounce, bounce, bounce going on than I did with the passenger car tires. Definitely a lot of road noise. You can hear the knobs. Uh, a little squirrely. You can feel they're softer, so definitely not a road tire, uh, but it's not undrivable. Gonna make sure to air up my tires before off-roading. Not bad, I got six in it still. Love these automatic shutoff ones, I can walk away and forget it. All right, got 10, so we're good.
original plan was to go there, uh, to where there's endless amounts of dirt and rocks and I can uh, do some thorough tire testing. Apparently it's not okay for vehicles to drive there anymore because they might disturb the piles of dirt, but you only can use a mountain bike and a horse because they don't disturb dirt. So anyway, can't go there. I found a few hills right close to the parking lot that aren't closed off, so I'm gonna do some testing anyway, just not gonna be quite what I wanted. But we'll find out how the tires work. Now a hill like this, where they have a dip for a rear tire and an opposite corner dip for a front tire, is a good test of a vehicle with open differentials. This will actually test them pretty well. And I'm going to take the entirely wrong line just to see how it goes. That's it for today. I couldn't go as far as I wanted because they didn't let me. But I did get to try out the tires a bit, and I'm real impressed. Those ATV tires are by far the best tires I've had in that Jeep for off-roading. I think a slightly yes less used set that's DOT approved would be perfect. So I'm going to head out and uh, see if I can find any more fun little bits of trail that are actually allowed on the way out, and I uh, hope you guys are having fun too. We'll see you next time. another lock gate. Uh, get a lot of practice turning around. Oh well, we'll find more.